the warriors Changing our world day by day The way of the thrift of warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Good morning, good morning, Big Square, Rotary.com With your morning, Horner's Asia, your sip of chaga coffee Oh yeah, um, I took a few days off, it was great, it was fun um, Came back to the same crap with silver, with cryptos With our government so it was like I wasn't even gone, if you ask me. My tooth popped out again. Got to get that permanently glued in there. Um, but let's talk silver. It looks like, to me, <clears throat> the, the latest con, I think the latest con is being portrayed and, and carried out by the uh, silver lease lessors, lessees, people who took the lease, basically Bank of America, took the lease from uh, J.P. Morgan on 1.2 billion ounces, all that silver is going into somebody's hands. Um, could be the U.S. Mint, could be Warren Buffett, and could be Elon Musk. Or maybe spread out between them. It's definitely leaving J.P. Morgan, leaving Bank of America. Um, but it looks like to me over the last five days, they're trying to protect $24. Now, why would they try to protect $24? Um, well, usually I think the leases are about one-year leases. So I went back and looked at the one-year lease to see if we had... Uh, one year ago, the price to see if it was anything near $24, and voila, there you are. It's right in the $24 range. Um, so these leases were put on at $24. So anything above that, at the end of lease, they have a fixed purchase price at the end of lease. Um, I don't know what that purchase price is, but using derivatives on the OTC derivatives, I'm sure they locked it in. They wouldn't do an open-ended type of at least Bank of America, I think, was required by law by the you know the secret bust of J.P. Morgan to um, get rid of that 1.2 billion ounces uh, or or be I don't know what they do to them. Who knows, right? But it, they did have a deferred prosecution for three years, so it's it, we're, I think we're coming up to the end of the three years of this this year, so it should all be done this year. But who knows? Um, silver can blow any moment, any time. Um, the true fair market value of silver is probably around a one to one ratio with gold. I know that sounds crazy because it's 75 to one right now. It's only crazy if you actually hold gold. If you have gold, you're crazy. Um, not because it's not a good metal. It's a great metal. It's a fantastic metal. It's a, it's the banker's monetary metal, whereas silver is the people's monetary metal. Um, but what are the bankers going to sell when they all go bust because their derivative book blows up? They're going to have to liquidate their gold. And that would cause a huge spike down in the gold price if, if, you know, if the exchanges are still up and running, which I don't think they will be, so I don't think it'll matter. But if you want to play that game, <clears throat> these large banks hold the majority of the gold. Yes, central banks own some gold as well, but it, it's... I think the vast majority is in the banking hands, especially the criminal banks like HSBC, J.P. Morgan, uh, Bank of America now. Um, so when their derivative book blows, they have to sell anything of value. And obviously gold will be something of value. So they'll have to get rid of that and um, liquidate, wind down. Uh, people ask me, do you think there'll be a haircut? Because it's written into the law. Well, what's written into the law, yes, it, there, there will be a haircut, but it's only over the FDIC insurance. So it's only over $250,000 uh, per. Now, that's where it gets a little tricky. Uh, it's per account at each institution. And then it changes if you have a, uh, if you're married with the benef uh, beneficiaries, you can add beneficiaries. Each one of those gets two hundred fifty thousand. There's a, a complicated way to do it. If you have a lot of money, you should have it in many different banks. If you want to keep it in the bank, uh, two hundred fifty thousand maximum, plus all your beneficiaries get two fifty each. Um, so play with that as you will. Um, we are getting to that time when everything's going to fall apart. I just don't know when. The can was kicked, obviously, um, when the Speaker of the House was appointed. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a World Economic Forum guy. But at least the good guys within Congress got it to a position where they can kick him out at any time. Um, and he didn't want to give that concession. <laughs> 
but it'll happen. I, I, I can't tell you when. I just don't know when. Um, I think it'll get more exciting this month, and that's a good thing. All right, I, my eye is open. My eyes are out for the U.S. Mint Annual Report. It should come out um, <clears throat> either today or tomorrow, Thursday or Friday, uh, maybe even Monday, because they might have to change it because of what uh, I'm looking for. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a massive loss in a derivative book like they had last year, which proved that the U.S. Mint is the largest. I don't know if they're the largest. The U.S. Mint is using the futures options derivative market to rig the price of silver lower. Um, and they had to report a gigantic loss for that. Now, the other, only other potential option is that they have... No, no, it wouldn't have been a, it wouldn't have been a rise. So if the, the price goes down, they should be losing money. Because, wait, the price goes down, they should be making money in their derivative book. Price goes up, they should be losing money. And the last year, the price went uh, down for the year, and they lost $100 million on top of it, $112 million on top of it. That's just pure fraud by Ventress Gibson, the head of the U.S. Mint. Um, I'm sure she was told to do it. She's just an HR professional. But uh, David Ryder, by the way, the Mint actually made some coins this year. <clears throat> now, the number, 3. <clears throat> 3.499, 3.5 million uh, coins for January. That's about on, on, on pace. Now, it's not just January. They just don't do anything, don't report anything in December. So 3.5 is, uh, it's a decent amount. But look, at two years ago, David Ryder was able to kick ass um, with just, I mean, he did 4.7 in the month of January, which is like average. But then he kept doing it, 3 million, 4 million. And then he was, uh, they shut down the mint to, to put the, the notch on the bottom for the new monetary system. Um, so they shut it down in April, May, and he was, came right back, 3 million, 3.1, 3.9, 2.7. And then Ventures Gibson came in, in October, and it started dropping, 1, 1.5, and then uh, last year was pathetic, the lowest in years, 16 million coins. So Ventures Gibson is, it, I mean, if you're looking for what happened to the U.S. Mint Silver Eagle production, it was Ventures Gibson and the Biden administration. They refused to make Silver Eagles to meet demand. I did a debate with this guy uh, um, not too long ago. David Morgan was in on it, moderating, kind of. Um, and he's, he's a pro mint guy. He's pro the system. He was trying to explain why, uh, the silver Eagles, it's, it's, uh, they, they couldn't meet demand. It was another ridiculous explanation, uh, saying it has to do with the sunshine mint and all that. That's bullshit. The sunshine mint has expanded capacity to 90 million, uh, blanks they can make. And I want to thank the CEO of, uh, sunshine mint for telling that us that now, he, now, some people claim that the U.S. Mint is um, can't bid high enough because other coins are other coin manufacturers are bidding higher. That is not true. The U.S. Mint is obligated by the same law to bid as much as possible to meet demand. So they should be bidding, you know, five dollars over spot for the blanks if that's what it takes to get them. Um, but I, you know, the word is they're, they're expanding to different, uh, manufacturers of the blanks, but the reality is Ventures Gibson said they significantly expanded Silver Eagle production capacity last year and, and went, and that was about, uh, about halfway through the year. And yet she did nothing with that expansion, nothing. Um, so I'll be watching closely, writing letters to Ventures Gibson, the U.S. Mint, if she comes in with a huge loss in the derivative book, then we got a problem. And everybody should be screaming at them. I mean, you should be screaming at the men already because they're not producing silver eagles in quantities to meet demand. Um, at least they're not selling them to the public, which they are required to by law. They might be making them and holding them for the new monetary system, which is... I think they're doing that with gold. Uh, there's nothing in the Road to Rooted documents that says silver will be uh, used as money again. There is massive... Uh, information about gold being used as money because we have so much goddamn gold there's not 200,000 gold tons of gold in the world that people like jeffrey christian will tell you there's millions of tons of gold the i think the biggest problem with gold is we don't know how much there is 
We know, I know there's over a million tons that I've counted. But the U.S. Mint? How do you value gold in U.S. dollars especially? Well, I think they'll just keep printing the dollars. You know, they're, they're setting up with the fake CPI numbers that just came out. They're setting up for uh, the Fed to kick the can and try to lower interest rates, saying, oh, everything's fine. Meanwhile, they print, print quadrillions of dollars and kick it out the back door. It's a mess. Everything is a mess. So hang in there. We're going to get through this. Uh, crypto people got excited <clears throat> yesterday because Bitcoin went up. You know, when Bitcoin goes up, everything goes up because most of the exchanges that happen in cryptocurrencies are with from coin to coin, not new money coming in. Um, I doubt there's any new money coming in. And how do you bring new money into these criminal exchanges? You know, FTX was just the tip of the iceberg. Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, Binance, of course. They'll all go down before the end of this criminal activity is until we can move on from these ass wipes. That's a good word. All right. Um, so exciting things today. My friend Dick Algar, Algar over at Crypto Viewing found an article about more gold in the Grand Canyon. I'm going to be doing a discussion uh, with him later today. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of articles about gold in the Grand Canyon all the way up until Woodrow Wilson shut off uh, any mining at all in the Grand Canyon. It was, I mean, that was, that was the hot spot to go um, after, after California the California gold rush. There was an Alaska gold rush. But the Grand Canyon was so hard to get to and so difficult. I mean, imagine an environment. You're, you're in like the arid desert environment. No water anywhere back in the, the early 1900s trying to pan for gold or find gold in, in, the, in the crevices of the Grand Canyon. And they were finding it by the uh, huge amounts. And all kinds of articles about that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what he's got. That'll be posted on private road, road to Ruta. Go to roadtoruta.com. Check it out. Uh, and he, I think this is the article he's looking, he was looking at. Um, Salt Lake Mining Review. The Old Spanish Mine in the Grand Canyon. I looked at the article and um, I'm excited about talking to it with, uh, with Dick. But I've, I've seen many of these articles. There was something called yellow journalism really kicking in back then too. Um, but so it comes down to when you find these articles, it's about the specifics. What can we prove? And that's what I did with the, uh, the Grand Canyon gold, that article I found in the New York Times. I, I said, okay, what can I prove? And this is saying there's billions and billions and billions of ounces in the Grand Canyon. What can I prove? And I went through and I proved that that article was absolutely correct. I found all the, I found the, uh, the steamship they put in there and I tracked down all the people involved. Uh, those of you who like that story about Seth Tanner and the cave of uh, Egyptian artifacts in the Grand Canyon, if you like that story, um, listen to the Crypto, we, Crypto Viewing did two movies on the Grand Canyon stuff that uh, I was in. Go check it out at CryptoViewing.com. No, dot, Patreon. Patreon Crypto Viewing. They have a great uh, channel, really cool stuff. So go check that out. I'm going to be talking to Dick later today. I'll, I'll put that up on the private road. Also, um, if you're interested in more stuff about the secret gold that I keep talking about, go to roadtoruta.com and just search. do a search for, let's search for the Grand Canyon. And here we have 115 articles and videos on my research into the Grand Canyon. And it's true, there, massive amounts of gold was found in the Grand Canyon. This article is absolutely true. This was the, the number one reason for creating the Federal Reserve. It wasn't just so the bankers could take over and Woodrow Wilson got fooled. No. They had, this would, when you increase the monetary supply by 20x instantly, you're going to have a problem with governments. You're going to have a problem with uh, who's rich and who's poor. You're going to have a problem with society in general they used gold as money back then and all of a sudden billions and billions of ounces are found Psh, what do you do you shut it all down you create the federal reserve they create fake money and you run that printing press as long and hard as you can until people won't trust the money anymore that's where we are now so keep an eye on the road to ruta you want to learn more uh, you can subscribe and we are currently at least right now Giving away one silver Ruta Lives coin to every renewal or subscription. 
Go check that out. This is Big Swear. I'll talk to you.